It looks great and I have two of them. Hey guys, it's a tough time for anyone looking to buy Raspberry Pi 4, especially more posh models like with 4 or 8 gigabytes of RAM. So once you got that board and you pay probably overpriced price for the board, what do you do then? Obviously, since you've paid a lot of money for it, you want to keep it secure and display or showcase it to your friends so they're all gonna be jealous about your purchasing choices. And today I've got something that will do just that. It was a couple of months ago when 52Pi reached out to me with their first case. It was a very much prototype design and, well, I could tell because the shell was 3D printed and everything uh, lacked of polish. However, they promptly assured me that this is in fact the prototype and they're working on a much better version of this case, which is going to be available for sale soon. And while I enjoyed the 3D printed enclosure, there are many things I would change with it. And I actually made a list of things I would probably sit down at some point in front of Fusion and try to fix, then 3D print a better enclosure and make it an other case. But you know, it was like you add stuff to your to-do list and well, it kind of keeps getting pushed at the end of the list. I'm guilty of that as well. Fortunately, all of these has been actually addressed in the new release. So the cable management and the better mount for the display and all those small things that bothered me with the original prototype, well, they're no longer there. And I think I can safely remove them from my to-do list because since the case is already there, I don't have to redesign it myself. That's a win. And now a couple of months into that, I finally have the ready product, which is aptly named ZP0130. I mean, there is an entire range of these uh, cases, uh, starting with ZP0128, which, well, basically just have a case and an ice cooling tower. Then there is a 29 version, which has got UPS in case you want to make sure that your Raspberry Pi doesn't go offline when there is a power surge and 3.0, which comes with M.2 attachment, allowing you to take advantage of the boot from USB. And all of those cases come with a very unique design, OLED display to display the most crucial data, and I call it tower, a fan which is very efficient. And in case your Raspberry Pi 4 isn't just a display piece, and, well, you don't want it to just look cool, but it well, do cool things. Then it comes with a little adapter that you can pop it onto your GPIO header and expose the entire 40 pin GPIO header to your either direct access or perhaps using a ribbon. But first you'll have to assemble one. And I have some tips for you because obviously I would make the mistakes. Fortunately, the process isn't complicated and if you are me, you can complete this in about 15 minutes. If you are yourself, probably in 10 because you're gonna read the instructions and you're not going to make the same mistakes I did. The first thing I had to redo is just turn around the heatsink 180 degrees because I wasn't paying attention and it will get in the way of the header and the case acrylic sides as well. So pay attention to that. Then if you went for a UPS design or M.2 design add-on boards, then you'll have to make sure that, that the pogo pins are properly aligned and not bent. So take extra care in there. And lastly, it's a brilliant idea and very efficient one to actually add all the connectors onto your header before you mount the acrylic panels. It seems obvious right now, but it wasn't that obvious when I was assembling it. I guess I got too excited. And lastly, the acrylic isn't shatterproof, so take extra care with panels and do not over tight the screws because you may actually crack the acrylic and you will ruin a very beautiful and nice final look. And now that you are proud owner of the actual case with the Raspberry Pi 4 inside, well, there is a one more thing to take care of, which is uh, display stuff on the OLED display. This is 0.96 inch display, it's quite bright and it's very handy for display information like uh, CPU usage or maybe uptime or IP address of your device, so you can always find it on a network. 52Pi includes all the drivers in a single installation pack. There's a small problem with that because it will install the OLED driver and the default banana, dancing banana, as a service, which means you'll have to disable that if you want to override it with something else, and I'll strongly recommend you, you do that. 
Now, in the article linked to this video in the description, I'm going to follow all the steps in there, so you can just simply copy and paste it and do the same. I've opted up for that sys histogram, which is quite nice and showcase pretty much everything I need on the case like that. But there's nothing stopping you to take things in your own hands and program that so you could display, I don't know, maybe most popular tweets from Twitter. Or just take a couple of examples and make a loop out of it so they show up every 10 seconds or so. I mean, the limit is your imagination. Now that we both stopped looking at this excellent footage of the case in action, let's talk about shop. First, the Ice Tower Cooler. I've reviewed the cooling performance of that cooler in this video specifically, but this unit is slightly different. After my initial review of the cooling tower, I quickly followed it up with a DIY mode that would introduce individually addressable LEDs so you could actually do whatever you wanted to. Now, this is included by default, I guess they were watching my video, but at the same time you kind of lost the ability to control the speed of the fan. Now, it's not a massive problem because the fan is actually, well, quite quiet and barely noticeable and the cooling performance is decent, so I'm not complaining. But if you bend on actually getting it done and have PWM controlled fan, you can easily disconnect the wires from the included socket inside and drive it separately. That's possible and it shouldn't really take that long to fix. 52 Pi actually assured me that they're gonna have yet another edition of this case coming out with a PWM fan control, so I'm looking forward to that as well. So how good it is when it comes to cooling? Well, it depends on the ambient temperature. Recently we had a heat wave and it's quite hot and I was running my benchmarks in 24 degrees of heat, which is more elevated than usual benchmarks that I did in the past. Nonetheless, the Raspberry Pi in at idle was performing at around 44 degrees of Celsius. So that's quite respectable, especially considering that if you're going to run this in normal temperature of 18 degrees, then we're talking about sub 40 degrees temperature at idle. But if you crank things up a little bit, and I've used my specially designed uh, benchmarking flow in Node-RED, you can read about it in, in this video here, then uh, after 10 minutes the temperature goes all the way to 55 degrees. So not that much because it's a beefy cooler and even tiny little bit of flow from that cooler, it's enough to actually make a big difference. So as far as benchmarks are concerned, you can overclock your Raspberry Pi and you're not going to run into any issues, even if it's quite toasty inside. Lastly, I do have a ZP0130 version, which is M.2. Bear in mind, this is a SATA drive. If you get NVMe one, it's not going to work. So pay attention when shopping. I'm going to include some links to the good drives in the description of this video too. It's time to talk about the performance. Now, there's a couple of things I should really consider. First, the speed of the drive is going to be crucial. If you're going to get some poor drive, the speed will reflect that. Now, it's not that the Raspberry Pi is quick enough to actually feel this. For the most part, well, I got the average drive with the speeds up to 500 megabytes per second, which is fast enough in terms of SSD, but not the fastest one for sure, and it's plenty for the Raspberry Pi. In fact, it's so fast that it's not going to matter that much unless I'm going to do all local operations. Because as soon as I'm going to use this as network storage, I'll be limited by the bandwidth of the one gigabit connection. I've run the speed benchmark of the drive attached to this board via my computer to confirm that the um, board itself is not hindering the performance of the drive and the results are pretty good. I mean, I'm not getting full 500 megabytes per second, but close enough to validate the result. Overall, it is a funky case with all the lights inside and quiet performance. I'm sure you'll be very pleased to put it somewhere on the desk and show it to anyone visiting your room. I mean, it's a definitely a display piece. And there might be some other cases like Argon One or Argon Eon, which I've got in here, which look sleek, but they don't have that quirky character of that 55, uh, 52Pi ZP one, no, 0130, uh, which is gonna just look bonkers with all that oversized heatsink inside and the Raspberry Pi 4 of your choice. 
And the case isn't that expensive either because you're gonna pay around 70 pounds for the case with, well in this case, M.2 attachment. So overall it's a pretty good deal for your board which you're probably gonna spend three times as much considering current pricing. So if you have a Raspberry Pi at 4 and you're looking for a super cool case then give it a go. I'm gonna link some of the links to those cases in the description of this video for your convenience. So guys, do tell me what cases you use for your Raspberry Pi boards and leave uh, the information in the comments section of this video. I'll be reading these and checking the most popular cases out. Thanks so much for watching and big thanks for 50 to 5 for sending me two of them cases so I could review them. And well, you know how it works. I do not have a posting schedule, so if you wonder what's going to happen next, then uh, you know how YouTube works. I'm not going to explain that either. Follow me on social media, start a conversation with me, and I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.